One of the things that I do on my system when it comes to software, I really don't care about the package format that software is available in. I don't care if it's a native Arch package or native Debian package, whatever it happens to be, whatever distribution you're running. I don't care if it's a snap pack, a flat pack, an app image. I don't care if you have to install it with a programming language specific package manager like pip, gem, cargo, cabal, you know, whatever it happens to be. I really don't care where my software comes from, even though I'm kind of a, I'm a free software enthusiast, right? I like using free and open source software where possible. So I like things being licensed under free licenses like the GPL, the MIT license, the Apache license, things like that. Uh, you know, I'll use proprietary software when it's necessary because it's you can't really escape proprietary software completely in life. Unfortunately, we're not there yet. But for the most part, I would say 99% of the software that I install typically is free and open source software. But a lot of people wonder why I use snap packages. I've been getting this question a lot because you guys see that, you know, I I got a question the other day on HeyDT about my thoughts on Flatpak. And I said, Flatpak's fine. I have no problems with Flatpaks. Uh, somebody asked, did I prefer Flatpaks over other package formats like snaps and app images? And I said, no, I don't really prefer any of the three over the other three. I guess if I had to say, if I really had a preference, I like app images because it fits my workflow, but just because app images are portable. You can carry them around everywhere on a USB stick or whatever. But that's just because that kind of fits what I do with software. But I wouldn't say app images are inherently better than snaps or flatbacks. But a lot of people wondered why I would use something like a snap package because I, I I don't trash snap packages like so many people on the internet. When you go to Linux subreddits and Linux forums, even, you know, looking at people talking about Linux on YouTube, a lot of them love to tell you how bad snap packages are. And I don't do that. And I think a lot of people imagine I would trash snaps because it is not fully open sourced, at least the back end. And when we're talking about the Snapcraft store, the Snap servers, right? That is not open sourced, right? Now, does that matter to me? Not typically because the software I'm pulling down from the Snap store, when I do a Snap install name of software, you know, if it's an open source program, it's still open source when I get it. Yes, I had to use a proprietary middleman, a proprietary third party uh, server to actually download that piece of free and open source software. But like if I get the snap version of Mozilla Firefox, which is free and open source software, right? Even though I install it as a snap, it's still free and open source software, right? It's licensed under the MPL, the Mozilla public license, right? Which is one of the major five uh, free licenses, right? So it's still free and open source software. Yeah, I used that middleman, right? That web server that's not really open source to get that thing. Is that an issue? I don't know. I mean, the reason I don't harp on it the way so many other people harp on it is because I don't want to be a hypocrite, right? Because we all use closed source web services all the time on a daily basis, almost a hourly basis, right? We're on things that are closed source services on the internet. And many of us, even with free software, free and open source software, how many times do you go and grab a piece of software or even the code or whatever it happens to be from a not fully free and open source Git hosting platform like GitHub or GitLab, which are not entirely open source? Do you really know what they're public servers, assuming you're using public repositories on those services. Do you really know what's going on on those services? Not really. I mean, obviously you could host your own GitLab, for example, if you're really concerned about that, but most people don't, right? Because it's time consuming. It costs a little bit of money to set up your own server. You're just going to use GitLab stuff. But, you know, you do have to put some trust in some proprietary things sometimes. How many of you download an ISO for a Linux distribution? These Linux distributions are pretty much all free and open source software, but how, how do you get the ISO? Do you go to some proprietary forge and download the ISO? You know, do you get it from BitTorrent, right? Do you open up a torrent client and get it from you know peer-to-peer -peer services? I mean, if that's not really licensed in any way. Can you really trust that ISO? Yeah, you do have to put some faith in non-free things. And by non-free, I'm talking about 
freedom respecting things, you do have to put some faith in proprietary non-free things on occasion. And we all do that. All of us do that. And I don't see getting a piece of free and open source software from Canonical Snap Store as being that different. So if I really just wanted to trash Canonical and Ubuntu and say they're just evil for having a closed source website, right? Uh, how could I do that with a straight face, knowing that so many other things that I interact with on a daily basis are the exact same way? So that's just a little bit of behind the scenes on how I think of these things and why I'm not part of the crowd, right? I, I rarely am part of the crowd, right? I'm usually not singing the same tune as everybody else. So that's part of my thinking. I just wanted to share that with you guys because I, I've been getting some questions about this. And you know what? If you're one of these people that go along with the crowd, you see everybody else trashing, for example, Canonical and Ubuntu for not open sourcing their Snap server. Let, let me be clear about this. I would love for Canonical to open source the Snap Store, right? I would love for them to do that, being a free and open source software enthusiast. And because Canonical is such a large open source company, you know, it's just goodwill for the community if they would do that. But at the same time, I again, I use so many other proprietary services, proprietary websites, things that are not fully free platforms on occasion to get free and open source software anyway. Is that that different than the Snap Store? In my mind, it's not really. So it, just for not being a hypocrite, I can't attack them for that. Anyway, just some food for thought. Peace, guys.